Let's go with this problem. All right, let's see. Hmm. This, and I'm telling you that this is an equilateral triangle. If it's equilateral, that means all the sides are the same. They don't say it, but if all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. So that means this is 60. The reason it's 60, and all of them are 60, is because if you add 60 plus 60 plus 60, it gives you 180. Well, if I did 180 divided by 3. So they give you an equilateral triangle, and let's say you have this drawn to the opposite side. And we say this, so I call it an altitude, but this angle here, it's split in half, not drawn to scale. This would be a 30 degree angle. Well, if that's 30 degrees, then I know this is the same. I already told you that was 60. 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then some of these are giving you one value, you got to find the other. Let's say they give you this is x, you got to find and they gave you this is 10, you got to go from, this is how you got to think about it, opposite 30 to the hypotenuse. Okay, now that I've gone through this, let's go up here, and I have some examples we're going to go through. All right, these are three different scenarios. You just got to remember the relationship. It's fun. Enjoy it. So, hmm. If I give you the hypotenuse, that's the slant, to go from the hypotenuse to the side, oh, I went the wrong way, to go from the hypotenuse to the side opposite the 30 degree angle is always half. I don't care what it is. When I say half, you always divide it by 2. So if I divide 10 by 2, it's going to be 5. Nothing to think about, but it is something to think about. What if I gave you, say, square root of um, 6? Well, if I'm going from the hypotenuse to this side over here, opposite 30, it's just going to be square root of 6 divided by 2. Because you really can't simplify that. You would just leave Okay, set. So go from the hypotenuse to the one opposite 30 is always divided by two or half. All right, cool. All right, so now let's do backwards. This time I'm going from, hmm, I'm going from opposite 30 to the hypotenuse. Same thing. Only difference is you're going backwards. So the other one was divided by two. This one multiplied by two. So this is going to be 28. Okay, try to stay color coded. Let's go back. So this should be 28 here. Set. Okay, same deal. If I gave you like square root of, I don't know, 5, and I'm going from opposite 30 to the hypotenuse, your answer is, get my color codes off, it's going to be 2 times square root of 5. And you leave it like that. Set. Okay. Now, if I give you opposite square root of, oh, I didn't do the other one. I'm going to need to draw some more triangles. I think I want to get rid of this. All right. What if I give you this side over here, opposite, opposite 30, and let's make it 5. Okay. If I give you the one opposite 30 to go from opposite 30 to opposite 60, you multiply by square root of 3. So I'm going to go square root of 3 times 5, which is, I'm going to leave it as 5 square root of 3. Okay. Same deal. If I'm going backwards, if I gave you, let's say this is 12. This is opposite 60, and I'm going to opposite 30. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to do opposite. I'm not going to multiply by square root of 3. I'm going to divide by square root of 3. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm ran out of space. Um, I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to say 12 divided by square root of 3. 
Well, this one's fun because you can't leave it like that. You got to rationalize. So I got to multiply this by the square root of 3. Hopefully you remember that ra rationalize. But whenever you have a radical in the denominator, you always multiply by that radical over itself. Because I don't want a radical in the denominator. So that's going to make this in my numerator 12 radical 3. You really can't do anything with that. Over, well, square root 3 times square root 3 is square root 9, which is 2. Well, this one's nice because that one will simplify to 4 radical 3. So this would be 4, I'm going to write it over here just to stay consistent. Okay, hopefully that helped. I'm going to do one more um, just for the sake of understanding this. Um, let's do this one. It looks weird. Okay. Hmm. Let's find all the values. Well, this is 10, right? That's opposite 30. How do I go from opposite 30 to the hypotenuse? Just double it. So 10 times 2 is, that's 20. 20 is x. Nothing else to think about. Well, how do I go from opposite 30 to opposite 60? If I needed to find it. This would be 10 radical 3. So, you want a little more challenging than that. Let's see. This is the one that sometimes messes up brain cells here. I'm going to put 60 over here. Just to show you, you always focus on opposite that value. Okay, let's see if I give you opposite 60. I'm going to make this a hard one. Let's make this square root of 8. It's a hard one. It's just a radical. If they give you square root of 8, already you can simplify this. They want you to break this down. The square root of 8 is radical 4 times radical 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So this is the same as 2 square root of 2. Just understand that. If they give you something like this, break it down. Now I'm going opposite 30 to opposite, excuse me, opposite 60 to opposite 30. Well, if I was going 30 to opposite 60, I would multiply. This time you're dividing. So I'm going to go 2 radical 2 divided by square root of 3. Well, that's fine. You can't leave it like that. So now I'm going to multiply this by radical 3 over radical 3, which is 2 radical 6 over, well, square root of 9 is 3. Okay. Now I have the one opposite 30. Now, to go from opposite 30 to the hypotenuse, just double it. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. So I multiply that by 2, just multiply that numerator. So that's going to be 4 radical 6 over 3. And again, that's probably one of the harder ones there. But again, there's examples. Hold that up. See ya.